Hope you're excited for another amazing episode of Disruption Nation. This is sponsored by the Seth Brothers EXP. And we're back. Disruption Nation, Smith Singh in the hot seat today. Thank you so much for Absolutely. being on. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Taylor. This, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a ton of fun. So Disruption Nation is a show, podcast platform. We highlight people that are disrupting their space in a positive way. And she's been making waves in a very short time in the, in the real estate community. So uh, congratulations. By the way, 250K, her second year. In, Thank you. Right? You know, commissions. And, um, you know, sh- super forthcoming when... We were kind of doing pre-show stuff with with that, which I think is uh, phenomenal. But let me know. Let me let you know who you're dealing with. All right. So uh, five years old and gassed. Okay. Prior to, and then um, she is uh, she has eight people on her real estate team right now on the Seth Brothers team, and then has her own team, you know, within uh, under the umbrella, GHBA finalist realtor of the year, right there. Yes. <laughs> right there. Number two. She was like, I hate it. I was like, uh, but, but, you know, no worthy, no worthy. Uh, let's see. So from India, got her undergrad um, you know, in Pennsylvania. So she's Pennsylvania for four years. Entrepreneur for 12. Had two storefronts. One was math and science for, uh, for kids. Fourth, four years old all the way up to uh, high school. That's right. Right? That's like, right. That's inspiring. Had to, you know, be pretty, pretty self-rewarding. It was, it was, absolutely. I mean, I learned so much about entrepreneurship in my first, you know, go. I mean, I had no clue what I was doing and I got into it and I was, yeah, learned a lot. Tell me, tell me about that. How did you get into that? (laughs) Um, Absolutely crazy. So I was in oil and gas for about five years um, when I moved from my undergrad to Houston. By the way, I was in Pennsylvania for three and a half years, not four, because the last semester I ran from there. I just could not take the cold. I hated the snow. I I just said, you know what? Like, please just get me out of here. I came for a job interview in Houston. I still remember so clearly um, they put me up at the Posto, you know, on Post Oak. Yeah. And uh, at that hotel right there. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, like it's August, September here. I love this weather. I'm not going back. So um, I did whatever I could to get that job because I did not want to go back to, to Pennsylvania. I got the job and I told my professors, listen, I've gotten a job. I'm just going to come by, fly in, do my last final exam and be done with it. That's what I did. Wow, so, that's awesome. yeah, I worked in oil and gas for about uh, five years. And then um, I just I wanted to become an entrepreneur. I've always at, had that entrepreneurial itch. Even when I was uh, in oil and gas, I would do things on the side. Um, Never realized that that's what really got my jam, right? So um, I I just said, okay, I'm going to start my own business and got introduced to this um, Kumon concept, which is a math and science center. And it was working with kids and helping them with their math and science. And mind you, at this time, I had no kids. So really, I mean, now when I think back, I'm like, wait, why? I mean, how would I get into a... Oh, is this a good idea? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) When I got into a business that has to do with kids and I didn't have any kids, sure. Uh, But yeah, did that for about uh, five years, had that. Started with zero. Had no clue what retail was like. Had no clue what a service industry, um, owning a service business would be like. But Mm -hmm. um, absolutely loved it. And that really got my juices flowing. And I said, I love creating things. And I am an entrepreneur at heart. So um, I did that for, uh, well, I had it for a a period of time. Uh, Started from zero, got it to be really successful. Where was it? What part Um, of town? In Greatwood, actually. Did you live there? Uh, No, believe it or not, we used to live in Pearland. And I would commute every day to Greatwood. Okay. It was absolutely crazy. That is crazy. And uh, yes, and then um, and then I said, okay, let's do something bigger. So I um, decided to start a toy store. Gotta <laughs> love it. There you go. Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, it was a beast. You know, it was like a 3,500 square foot um, space in the Sugarland Town Center. Again, I had no clue about retail. 
um, <clears throat> inventory, you know, the systems, had no clue. But I said, this is what I'm going to do. And I still remember, you know, when, uh, when you start a store, like the soft opening happens, right? Sure. And you put everything, all this inventory is on my shelves. And the night before, I stood at my cash wrap mm -hmm. and I said, Smitha, you're in over your head. Like, what the hell are you doing? I knew a partner. <laughs> like, did you do this with your husband? Like, yes. a friend? or? So, my husband was working full time at that time. So, okay. he was helping me, though, on the side, but it was just me. Like, it was me hiring, firing, inventory, systems, starting from scratch, marketing, sales. All of it. How many people did you hire to run the um, toy store? So when I started, I had about six people. Okay. Eventually, we had to, um, you know, get more uh, employees. Okay. But um, I mean, that was. I had a little bit of an experience because of my Kumon because I didn't uh, hired employees over there. Gotcha. But this was different because this is front facing customer service, right? Um, and they had to be on their top of their game, know what they're doing, what they're selling. So all the training I had to do. But yeah, I mean, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine. I mean, like, who does that? I did, but. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, and so it's from there, it's from there, from toy store career, she moves to real estate career, okay? So it's building up to it. I so, know, right? So, 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 so here we are. And then, and then that apparently was a little bit of an accident. Oh. She used the word, she said, I got conned. Totally conned got conned. in the deal. Totally got conned into. I hear this story. I was like, wait, hold on, we're gonna talk about that. Totally got conned into getting into real estate. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, backing up. So I had the toy store, and um, you know, at that time, this was about four years ago. Um, toys were becoming uh, not very popular because the iPad came in. Everybody, all the kids now are on electronics. Um, Amazon came in, so we were starting to see a downturn in the retail toy industry. Um, and I had to end up selling my store. So. You know, when people talk about in entrepreneurship failures or um, things that you go through and you're like, well, you know what, this is okay. I had a 3,500 square foot beast sitting there with inventory and I had to get rid of it. So yes, I mean, that was a big lesson for me. Um, and it would have been very easy for me after that to say, oh, I'm going back to my nine to five job. But I couldn't because I'm an entrepreneur by heart and I had to do, I had to, I just, I was like, I don't care. I'm going to be resilient. I'm going to get through this and get into, get back into entrepreneurship. So at that time, I was actually mentoring a lot of women entrepreneurs to start their businesses. Um, and while I was doing that, um, you know, so the team that I'm with, uh, with Kanal and Sonnet, the Seth Brothers team, um, we are family friends. So we, do we celebrate a lot of um, Thanksgiving together, like Thanksgiving, Christmas holidays together. So one Thanksgiving, my husband and Benny and Kanal and Sonnet, um, after we had wined 